welcome to episode number eight of the Belleville Sens podcast. David Foote and Joel Vanderland here for uh, another weekly recap of uh, Belleville Senators action. A successful three-game homestand. And now the Sens prepare to head out on the road for what Joel Vanderland describes as a gauntlet of a road trip. We'll let him explain why he feels that way over the course of the show. Also this week, get to know your FO with our ticketing manager Alex Pickford. He'll be by to join us uh, a little bit later on as well. We might sneak in another interview from the past week as well. We didn't discuss before we hit record uh, this week because we do have to catch the bus in a couple of hours, but wanted to make sure that episode 8 was up and running uh, before we left and so that all the Sens fans can be caught up ahead of Again, this gauntlet of a road trip. Uh, it's going to be a, a fun week as the Sens head to Laval and Utica and Lehigh Valley. Uh, let's start first, though, Joel, with last week. Successful road trip for the Sens. They go 2-1. Uh, and one. Uh, They lose to those Utica Comets, first of all, and then uh, come back with a couple of big wins against the Rockford Ice Hogs and the Rochester Americans. Let's start with the Wednesday game. And uh, I should have pulled the clip from... Uh, interim head coach David Bell for a drop uh, on on our soundboard because we asked him about the game, um, obviously, after the game in the 4-1 loss, and his answer was? It was junk. It was junk, and I think there was a lot of people in the building that would agree with that. Yeah, I think it was kind of a lackadaisical type, type of game for the Bell Senators. Maybe after a successful road trip, like you mentioned, coming back home, um, maybe feeling themselves a little bit and... It uh, started out good. Uh, Roby Irventi finds the back of the net just under two minutes in, but after that, it was it was the Utica Comets who kind of took over the the control of the game and uh, started to use their size, their speed, their their forechecking ability, and and really made life miserable on those Belleville Senators. And it just um, not not a great game. And I think David Bell um, pretty uh, straight to the point there, calling it uh, a junk performance and. Um, luckily for, for his club, they, they took that to heart. They, they reset and they came back with some vengeance on, on Friday night as well. I think we're learning a couple things about David Bell now uh, a month in the big chair uh, downstairs. One, he's very honest. Uh, he doesn't sugarcoat things. He's going to tell you exactly how he feels. Two, we're learning that the players respond to him. And when he comes out and says uh, that was a junk performance, that was uh, far from good enough, uh, they do come back and, and respond, and they did that with back-to-back wins on uh, Friday against Rockford, 4-1, to getting a little bit of payback after the Ice Hogs thumped the Sens 8-2 to uh, in Rockford back at the end of uh, October. And then the maybe more important one, uh, the 3-2 victory over the rival Rochester Americans, another team that's battling uh, for one of those final two playoff spots in the uh, AHL's North Division. And the Wednesday game was uh, was excellent. Um, it was complete 180 from what we saw. Uh, sorry, the Friday game uh, was excellent. Complete 180 from what we saw on Wednesday. Um, Kevin Mandelese makes 32 saves. He's since been called up to the National Hockey League again. John Quenville gets off the schneid a little bit. Angus Crookshank continues to roll. And it was one of those games where we saw um, most of the guys who need to be chipping in do that, uh, save for Roby, who uh, didn't get into the mix on on Friday. But um, Angus Crookshank especially starting to carry the load offensively for this team, scoring uh, up to 21 goals now over the last week. Yeah, and he's kind of the heartbeat of this offense right now. Him him and Roby have really carried the load, um, so to speak, um, scoring timely goals, big goals. And I think with with Angus Crookshank, this is kind of the the progression you want to see from him. It uh, maybe at the beginning of the year it was a little bit of of a struggle trying to just get reacclimated with with playing the game after missing a full year with the tough injury. So uh, he's really taken to David Bell here over the last uh, little bit, and um, you can see when his motor's going and he's uh, feeling confident that he's a player that's going to put the puck in the back of the net quite often and. Um, he's been able to do that for this senator squad, and they're a big reason why they're why they're seven and three over their last ten. Is he's really come on? Um, Roby Arventi's really come on since he's returned as well. So Belleville playing a really straight, structured, structured game, and um, their goal scorers are scoring goals. And um, maybe it's not uh, <clears throat> the prettiest type of, of hockey, 
uh, most nights. And even this Rockford game, it's 2-1 late, and, and they put a couple empty netters yeah. in. And um, that's how this team's going to have to win. That's how this team wants to win. And um, I think when, when we talked to David Bell after that game, he, he had another pretty good quote just saying he thinks defense wins, and uh, that's how they're going to uh, go ahead with, with his kind of philosophy is – uh, locking things down and and letting those goal scores capitalize on those timely opportunities and uh, when they're doing that that you can see the c- type of stretch they're they're uh, able to put together. Uh, Ian Mendez from the Athletic uh, was down here this week uh, to do a feature on David Bell, so we're going to learn a lot more about his philosophy and uh, his background and things like that uh, in the next week or so when Ian's piece comes out. Um, so so keep an eye on that. But the defense thing. Um, I mean, and it's it's a cliche that you if you're a sports fan, you've heard it all the time, right? Defense wins championships, and um, now to have a coach who believes that uh, uh, vehemently, we're starting to see that style, um, you know, trickle in and and really show up for the Belleville Senators. Where yeah, they're they're winning these low scoring games and they're keeping their opponents uh, under three goals a game. Something they were having some trouble doing. Let's be frank, at the start of the season. Um, they were giving up four, five goals earlier on, and uh, it's something that even former head coach Troy Mann said, we're asking uh, our team to allow one less goal a game. And uh, it's funny how you get to a coach with a little little bit more of a defensive mind in there, and, and that starts to work. And, and it was the same on, on Saturday against uh, Rochester, a 3-2 victory. And in this game, yeah, Angus Crookshank scored again because that's – you know, you might as well put the money on it if you're gonna, uh, if you're betting on the American Hockey League. Uh, will Angus Crookshank score? Probably on the run he's on. But the other two guys who chipped in, uh, Matt Boucher and Jared Lucas Savages, also scoring for the Sens. And those are two guys who are not scoring as often, but have played no less important parts in this team since they both joined. Uh, back in in the fall yeah and those are two guys that have helped this team tremendously and really helped to to plug spots uh, as we go over the course of the season with with all the injuries and we mentioned Roby was out and uh, we've seen other guys go down as well throughout throughout the year and Matthew Boucher and Jared Lucas Savages have been been here since October now Mm -hmm. uh, on on PTO deals so uh, really nice to see them get in the mix offensively because they both are um, by trade offensive guys, uh, Matthew Boucher, ECHL Rookie of the Year, really great player in the in the Quebec Major Junior League, and Jared Lucas Savage is also a player that's able to put the puck in the net, and he uh, he finds the game winner on Malcolm Subban. So, uh, and, and both those guys earned stars as well, and you could just see the the smile on their faces as they got uh, um, the cheers from the crowd because they've put in the work, and I, it's nice to see them get recognized for that and. Um, goal scorers always want to score goals, and I know those guys are are playing their role, and they're they're happy to to plug holes and play a good uh, middle six, bottom six uh, minutes for this hockey club. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, there's nothing better than than winning a hockey game and and being recognized uh, as two two key cogs in the offensive push. Yeah, uh, we have been saying lately on this show and on the broadcast as well that nobody seems to have more fun than Jared Lucas Savages. He's just been such a a glue guy for this team, Uh, maybe a little bit unsuspected uh, to take that role. Again, as a guy who's on a PTO, you don't typically expect them to stick around for as long as uh, as he has but David Bell said the same thing to us the other night after the game he said this is a guy who is just great to have around the room he works his tail off and um, he's just trying to seize his opportunity which is what all these guys on PTOs around the league are, are trying to do and here in Belleville they've uh, had maybe a little bit more opportunity to do that uh, and and let's not ignore the the two-way play of Matt Boucher, he leads the team in plus-minus right now at a plus-eight, which is pretty impressive for a guy who's not scoring a lot. No, and I think that just speaks to his stick to and reinventing a little bit of his role to, to stay in the American Hockey League because at the end of the day, he's chasing a dream, and his dad played in the NHL. He wants to play in the NHL. I went on a school visit with him uh, yesterday, and he's just uh, a great great guy a great community guy as well and and he really gets it so and jared luco savage as well we've yeah. we've done events with him and um he's a, he's a world of fun to be around and you can tell why he's gotten to 150 career american hockey league games coaches coaches love him because he's gonna put on, on the hard hat so to speak and uh do whatever he needs to do to stay in the league as well and 
Uh, sometimes it, it's just that it's uh, knowing the trust uh, that these guys have in, in the coaching staff and um, making sure that uh, they can continue to, to play the right way and <clears throat> chip in a little bit of offense, uh, play saw defense, and you're going to be around for as long as they've been. So that's your 10-minute recap on last week. Again, a uh, 4-1, disappointing 4-1 loss to the Utica Comets on Wednesday, a 4-1 win over the Rockford Ice Hogs on Friday, and a 3-2 victory over the Rochester Americans on Saturday. Uh, the Sens will get a little bit of, uh, uh, or a chance at least, at some more payback on the Comets on uh, Friday night this week when they head to Utica in the middle of their three-game road trip. We'll tee up that trip coming up a little bit later on in the show after Get to Know Your F.O. with Alex Pickford, uh, our ticketing manager here with the Belleville Sens. But um, before we get to that, let's... Uh, show you the playoff picture right now. Senators with their two wins last week uh, puts uh, them at 53 points. They're still sitting in six, so they did leapfrog Cleveland. Cleveland has two games in hand. Keep that in mind. Uh, but the Senators are in sixth place, so one place out of the playoff spots. Uh, three points back of the Laval Rocket, which makes this game on Wednesday absolutely massive for the Senators. It's their last chance of the season that they'll have to make up points directly against the Rocket. Um, if if Laval doesn't go to overtime on the weekend, this could be a two-point gap, and they could be tied after a win on Wednesday. But of course, in the North Division, nothing is ever easy. Nothing ever goes that way for the Belleville Senators, so they'll have to win and still need a little bit more help. Uh, moving upwards from there, so Laval in, uh, in fifth. Uh, the Rochester Americans are in fourth. Uh, at 57 points, so right in front of Laval. Utica is up in uh, third place, or sorry, Syracuse up in third place, 61 points. Utica just above them uh, in uh, in second with 62 points, and again, that's why the game in Utica will be equally as important. I think the Comets at this point will likely make the playoffs, but uh, they'd like to be as close to the Toronto Marlies as possible. Nobody is likely to catch the Toronto Marlies, who uh, have played 56 games and have 77 points uh, to this part uh, point in the season, though one of the Sens' other opponents had a pretty good uh, uh, week against the, the the Toronto Marlies earlier this week. Again, we'll touch on all that uh, in the third and final segment of the program. Um, stats leaders, we mentioned Angus Cruikshank is uh, the goals leader, 21. Igor Sokolov still has the most points on the team at 48. Cole Reinhardt, Jake Lucchini, and Ridley Gregg, all with a couple of shorthanded goals. And uh, Dylan Ferguson puts in uh, a couple of good performances and uh, is qualifying now for the uh, goals against and save percentage numbers for this team. Maybe a quick thought on the goaltending this week because it was very good on uh, on Friday and Saturday. Yeah, and I think when, when you want to play the way the, the Bevel Centers are playing these days and that defensive structure, you need your goalie to be, be your best player. And uh, certainly Kevin Mandeleze was on, on Friday night. And then a couple huge, huge saves from Dylan Ferguson on Saturday night to, to keep the Rochester Americans at bay. And only a 20-save performance, but that doesn't always uh, speak to the timely saves and the big saves that he made. And uh, since he's come in, he's been uh, tremendous. It's going to be a busy week, I think, for Dylan Ferguson as uh, Kevin Mandeleze has been uh, recalled to the NHL. So uh, the goaltending picture sure to change. You'll have to uh, tune in uh, through the course of the week to the broadcast for all the latest on that. Uh, that's the week that was a 2 and one trip for the Sens. Again, uh, or homestand, rather. Uh, again, they uh, head off on the road here uh, for three games, Laval, Utica, and Lehigh Valley. We'll talk about that in a bit. When we come back, Alex Pickford joins us for the next installment of Get to Know Your F.O. here on the Belleville Sens podcast. And we finish the segment with the highlight of the week, and it comes courtesy of the hottest senator of the week, Angus Crookshank. Rockford zone into the far corner. Aspro pinched in after it. Everybody changing behind him. Aspro knocked down. Crookshank in. He scores! Number 20 for Angus Crookshank. Comes on a heads-up play as Crooker comes speeding in and beats Jackson Stauber to give the Sens the lead. And like you said, a heads-up play there by Angus Crookshank, and you can see why he has 20 goals now. The motor never stops as he gets in there hard as the Rockford Icehawks can't settle down a bouncing puck in their own zone. Episode 
episode eight of the Belleville Sends podcast continues. Uh, David Foote, Joel Vanderland here. We've recapped the week that was a two and one homestand with the wins against Rockford and Rochester and a loss to the Utica Comets. Again, the Sends will have a chance at some payback against the Comets this week, uh, but we will uh, make you wait for the tee up for this week's games because it's time for this week's segment of Get to Know Your FO. And uh, with us this week is our uh, brand new uh, Director of Ticket Sales and Service, Alex Pickford. Uh, good day, sir. Hey, thanks guys for uh, having me. I'm excited to be here. And No problem. Yeah, pretty new to the role. It started uh, November, uh, so a few months in, but I feel like I've got my feet pretty wet so far and it's it's been a good ride. Has it been that long? Yeah, yeah. That it, is crazy. Yeah, it was uh, November 14th was my first day. Where has so. the season gone? It's just outrageous. Um, well, uh, either way, good to have you here uh, on the show. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about ticketing and uh, some of the important dates that are coming up for our uh, season ticket holders uh, later on. But let's get to know you a little bit first. Um, you are uh, living in Coburg, one of our uh, two uh, commuters, I suppose we could call you, yeah. but uh, is, that's that's not home for you, is it? Uh, no, so I was born in Peterborough, uh, then moved to Ottawa for a few years, uh, then recently moved to Coburg for uh, this job. Uh, my wife recently got a job in Peterborough, where we're originally from, so I wanted to stay within hockey, so this job became an opportunity that I couldn't pass up. Uh, allowed me to kind of move up my career and also allow her to uh, fulfill her career at the same time. Uh, so we moved to Coburg, about 45-minute drive for both of us. But honestly, I kind of like the commute. I put a podcast on or listen to an audio book, and you're kind of the drive just takes itself away. And uh, I actually, I actually enjoy it quite a bit. A lot of people may not, but I do. <laughs> you put the Belleville Sands podcast on. of course every Ab- week. Absolutely. Um, well, and that's awesome that you're able to to find somewhere in the middle to balance like that. And um, being from Peterborough. Now working in Belleville, which has been traditionally an OHL market, um, I think maybe that gives you a little bit of, uh, of insight into um, our fan base and, and kind of what the fans here have been used to over the years. Yeah, exactly. Like I grew up a Peterborough Pete's fan. I know some Belleville people may not like to hear that, but <laughs> I did grow up a Belleville, sorry, a Peterborough Pete's fan. I saw the Belleville Bulls come through many times as a child. So that was really cool to kind of uh, be a part of that. I had some different times with the Pete's as an intern and uh, part-time as well, kind of being a fan interactive um, s- staff member. Uh, so I really got to kind of learn how they do it uh, internally as a small team uh, and then kind of seeing that turn into what it's been since I think they've been around since the 1950s. So there's a reason that team's been around for so long and they've done it right for a really long time. And uh, so seeing how they do it and then seeing how Ottawa does it and then coming here, it's kind of a nice mix in between. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the city to me does have kind of that OHL feel. Uh, it's it's a small community. So I like that we kind of took that to heart and we really care about the community here. We do a lot of community events. A lot of stuff that we do off the ice and on the ice is driven towards the community, uh, which is a lot like the OHL. And that's what uh, I love about doing this job now. And like I said, I've only been here for a few months, but I feel like I've been here for a really long time and uh, I can really feel a part of it and what we're doing in the community. You mentioned your background in Peterborough. You also have a background working in the National Hockey League with, with the Ottawa Senators. How much has that helped you to uh, come into this role, knowing uh, the, the organization through and through and just the connections you shared with the, the staff in Ottawa to, uh, yeah. to kind of grow out the the whole organization Mm -hmm. like i learned a lot in ottawa i went from working in junior a to going to the nhl and kind of learning how they do it on the business side and you know you don't really realize how much goes into each game uh, until you're in the inside of it as a fan you're looking on the outside you just go as you're getting your ticket you're watching what's going on and that's it but from the inside you really see how how much it takes the grind it takes uh to put on a show every single game um, it's, it's, it's really awesome to see. And then coming down here, it's very similar. Um, each, each game, it takes a lot of, out of, out of everyone that's here. A lot of people are doing multiple jobs. Uh, the big difference between Ottawa and here is the staff I'd say is a lot larger there. There's a lot more people doing multiple jobs. We're here. Uh, there's less people doing multiple jobs. Uh, but I believe it's more of a family environment here compared to, Maybe in Ottawa, it's 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 a little bit larger. So you're you're a family within your team, but here I find the entire team is part of one family, uh, which is which is awesome. But 
Uh, just overall, uh, the similarities are, are pretty good uh, between the two. You, you get the same benefits. You get uh, the same connection. They're, they're willing to work with you at each level, and they really enjoy uh, working from within and promoting from within and, and seeing people work hard every single day. And that's kind of what happened here was I worked I worked as hard as I could. I grinded every day to try to get where I wanted to be. And Ottawa seen that and they looked at it as a reward to put me down here. And uh, it's, it's an opportunity that I wanted to take and I've, I cherish it every day. And I'm very thankful for every opportunity I've ever gotten within Ottawa and here. Uh, when you moved down, you mentioned you you wanted to stay in hockey. How important was that uh, for you to to stay in the sports industry and uh, continue this this journey you're you're on? Uh, it was very important. Uh, it's something that since I was a kid, I wanted to do. Uh, I wasn't any good at playing hockey, so seems I always... to be a common theme when, <laughs> when we have people on the show. <laughs> so I really wanted to do the outside part, which is you know the business side and. Obviously, every kid wants to be the next GM or the next scout, and you kind of learn that as you get older. Like, there's not a lot of jobs doing that. You kind of have to, if you want to work in hockey, you need to learn the business side and sales and marketing and things like that. And that's kind of how I started when I was about 15. Any job I could get within hockey, I would just take it. I didn't believe when I was younger that you needed to be paid. It was more of it's about the experience, and I worked a lot of years as as you know from. 15 to probably 25 there was a lot of time that I didn't get paid for things and that's because the passion drove it and now to come here and have an actual full-time job and and work in the industry all the time it's it's something that I don't ever want to give up uh so it, when my wife got that job in Peterborough I was trying to find a way to commute <laughs> if I had to do halfway it was I was not going to give that up there was a way that we were going to figure it out uh and then this opportunity just kind of came out of nowhere and it's honestly a, it's a dream come true and to be able to to do what we do every day I, I honestly am so thankful to do this and to stay within hockey and try to be in here as long as i possibly can you, you say the passion drives it when you see the crowd that we had on, on saturday night uh, just over three thousand, i believe uh what how does that make you feel to know that you played a big part in that it was great like there was a lot of you know community people here that we were honoring for heroes there was a lot of staff members from hospitals and we've lot, we got lots of emails from people that attended the game about how loud it was the atmosphere the the crowd was just right into it and just being so thankful for what we've done to the community and you know seeing just how happy people are when we're at the games and the more people that are here the the better the game is and i'm sure you guys can attest to this the players probably feel that as well it's you know when the, when the barns rock and everyone's happy right mm-hmm. and it's a win-win for everybody and um you know when it, it i want every game to be like that if we can sell it every game that's that's my dream that's my goal here and uh just because it, it honestly just makes everything better it, it makes the staff feel rewarded it makes the players feel love from the community and then you have these memories that people are going to come and you know the the kid that's going to get that stick at the end of the game like you just be, that kid is now a lifelong fan because yeah. of that and uh mem- that's something i've always believed in when i'm selling or talking to people you're you're selling them uh, an experience you're selling them memories that they'll have with their kids forever and as a kid who went to hockey games obviously i didn't have season seats in peterborough but lots of memories with my with my parents going to games and things that i cherish to this day and it's and I'm sure a lot of you guys have those memories as well. It, it it honestly is what drives the passion. It's it's the love and you want to be able to get everyone else to feel that and even people that won't get the opportunity to go to games and we have programs in place that, you know, we we connect with kids in the community that, you know, can't maybe afford a ticket and we're we're trying to get people that can come to games that wouldn't normally come because that's how you build fans, that's how you build memories, it's it's how we're going to be a better team overall when the community believes in us and we believe in the community at the same time. Chatting with Belleville Sands, Director of Ticket Sales and Service, Alex Pickford. Um, yeah, the community aspect is such a big piece of what we're trying to do here. And um, an AHL team, you know, any hockey team, but I think an AHL team specifically, really can become a cornerstone in the community. Um, we're doing some legwork for our History of Hockey Belleville Bulls Night, which is uh, being announced this week as well. And, um, you know, as, as much as people miss the Bulls, and, and I'm sure you miss going to Pete's games, um, this is a different level, but at the heart of it, it's exactly the same. It's still the old Yardman Arena on a Wednesday night where, you you know, your friends and your family and all the people you know from town are going to gather to watch the home team play and, and hopefully win a game. And I think that's kind of what we're going for here, right, is we're trying to remind people that, yeah, we are – a league above, yeah, we are affiliated with the Ottawa Senators, but at the end of the day, we're here for the people in the Bay of Quinty to to come out and have a good time and and 
to root for for our club. Yeah, exactly, and that that's what we want is we want the community to come out and uh, feel that that home feeling, and they 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 had an OHL team here for so long that they know that within the OHL you're always trying to you know be within the community, and that's exactly what we're doing here. And mm-hmm. this is it's professional hockey, and to be able to get connected with the players that we put out in the community, like with Ben when he talked about when he was on the Sens program in school, like. That that's unbelievable. That yes, it it is kind of the old way of like I remember when I was in school, like we had Pete's players that came through, and yeah. that's a memory that I always had. Even when the mascot came through, it was a big deal. Uh, so for us to be doing that right now, I think is huge. You're building that connection with younger generation, uh, and it's funny as yesterday they were out of school and. Um, one of the kids came right from the school to here with their colored page, ready to go so he could get his ticket for the next game. And his mom was super excited. They, they purchased a few tickets, and he was on cloud nine, and he thought it was just amazing that, you know, all I do is just color this picture in, and I got to come to a game for free. And <laughs> it was it was really cool to see it just like – and his mom said, like, on the way like on the way home, he had to stop. Like, like We weren't going home unless we stopped at the hockey arena to give them their picture. So it just shows you that we're really building a connection with this younger generation with some of these programs, and it's really awesome to see. Yeah, it's been fantastic. And I will say, um, well, I mean, we had tons of kids in the rink uh, the other night as well. It makes mm-hmm. such a difference. Like those are We want everybody, obviously, to come to the games and, and have a good mm-hmm. time. And if you're of age, come have some pops and, and have a night out like normal. But the, the kids are – to me, at least, really, what drive the energy in the building lately? It's been it's been awesome to see. Yeah, and I think w- Alex too. You, you talk about the kids. Uh, the season ticket base here is really strong. Mm-hmm. We, we've always known that. How has it been for you getting to know uh, the season ticket base and helping uh, them to to kind of enjoy hockey and uh, especially after co- a couple of tough years with with COVID and and getting back into the arena on a regular basis yeah it's been really good to kind of connect with them uh I my sales team is is fantastic uh uh, Alex you guys met last week another one is uh, Josh Hill and we recently brought in Evan Jeffrey uh so I think right now our team is really strong they really believe in customer service which is what I believe in uh I believe in adding value Uh, I believe in uh, connecting with the people at every game if you possibly can so just kind of hanging around I'm very I have that old salesman uh, way that I was with Ottawa where you, you're out in the arena, you're walking around, you're talking to people. So I still kind of do that. Uh, so it's really awesome to kind of connect with people. They tell me their stories where some of them, you know, some of them are driving actually from Peterborough. I've heard from to come our season seat members that come to every game and, you know, the, the passion that drives them to want to be here. Uh, it, it's it's awesome to see. And, and like you said, our season C base is, is strong and uh, we're hopeful to keep improving it and uh, keep adding more value each year and, and making people feel more appreciative because that's, that's a big thing I believe in is making people feel appreciative for what they're, they're giving us because they're a big driving force to what we do daily. A couple more minutes here with the Belleville Sens Director of Ticket Sales and Service, uh, Alex Pickford. Uh, let's talk about season seats. Uh, we're getting to that time of the year where you know there's under 10 home games left. Um, hopefully some playoff uh, hockey on the way, but we have to start turning our focus already to, to next October and next season. Um, where are we at in terms of uh, those season ticket holders who are looking to, to either jump on board or, or stay on board? Uh, yeah, so we're going to launch our renewal program, so... Basically, the 2023-24 season will begin on March 22nd, uh, so a few weeks from now. Uh, that's when anyone can start renewing for their packages. Uh, that's when we're going to put out information on what's coming that's new, uh, any changes. Uh, we're looking at adding some more value to what we already have uh, and adding a couple extra benefits. So uh, we really want to make it feel that you're getting more than just a hockey ticket. Uh, you're part of you know a family, and uh, we want everyone to kind of feel appreciative. Uh, sorry, we want them to feel that we feel appreciative that they're a part of it. Right. Um, and it's it's honestly, uh, I'm proud of what we're doing. Uh, and I think people are going to like uh, kind of what we put out here in the next few weeks. But April, tw- sorry, March 22nd is our date. Uh, and then that will run uh, right up until obviously next year. And then we'll have different things throughout the season uh, coming up. So you want to stay tuned uh, to the Belleville Sends social media at Belleville Sends. Your email, if you're on the email list, you'll get all the updates there as well. And, of course, BellevilleSends.com always has the updates uh, as we uh, yeah get set for renewal season. It's bittersweet, right? The, the season is potentially coming to an end, but uh, always the optimism of another campaign right around the corner. So it is that, uh, that time of year. Uh, before we let you go, uh, 
as you know, you're now what the fifth or sixth person we've had on. Mm-hmm. Get to know your FO. Uh, you got to nominate who is uh, on with us next week. Who's it going to be? So, in honor of International Women's Day, that's this week. I am going to nominate uh, Brian Matthews. So she uh, she's our boss. So <laughs> I think she'll be able to provide a, a lot of good insight of what we're doing uh, for this upcoming season. And I'm really excited uh, to have, uh, see what she's she's going to share. So. That's my nominee. All right. Next week, it will be Senior Vice President of Business Operations, Brianne Matthews. This week uh, on Get to Know Your FO, Director of Ticket Sales and Service, Alex Pickford. And uh, if you have ticket-related questions, uh, you can email him, pickfordA at com. Uh, thanks for the time, man. Uh, nice chat. Good to, good to see you. We'll see you next week when we get back from the road trip. Perfect. Thanks, guys. All right, when we come back from this short breather, we will tee up that road trip. Stops in Laval, Utica, and Lehigh Valley on the way for the Belleville Sens. Stay with us on Episode 8 of the Belleville Sens podcast on the Belleville Sens Entertainment Network. Episode 8 of the Belleville Sens podcast continues. Thanks again to uh, Director of Ticket Sales and Service, Alex Pickford, for his time on Get to Know Your FO. Next week's guest, Senior Vice President of Business Operations, Brianne Matthews. And there will be lots to talk about uh, with her next week, but also lots to talk about this week still as the Senators uh, leave in uh, just a couple hours from the recording of this program for a three-game road trip that includes stops in Laval, Utica, and the PPL Center in uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania to take on the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. David Foote and Joel Vanderland uh, still here with you. Thanks for sticking around with us. Uh, Please don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening right now. Give us a rating of five stars is preferable and a review as well. And uh, that'll help us out as we continue to help you out to stay in touch with the Belleville Sens and up to date on everything that's happening around the club. Let's get into the road trip this week, uh, Sens coming off a successful road trip, successful homestand, and now looking for another successful road trip. And it will begin with uh, a game that's got some pretty significant playoff implications in Laval on Wednesday night. Sens trail the Rocket by just three points um, in the North Division for that fifth and final playoff spot. And uh, there will be no secrets between the Senators uh, and the Rocket because they have already played each other 11 times this year. And Despite the fact, Joel, that the Sens have a, a good record against Laval this season, 8-3, 0 uh, it's not the time to kind of rest on those results and be overconfident heading into Wednesday. No, it's not, a, and especially going into that building, it's it's going to be rocking. Um, the Laval Rocket are, are always well supported, and uh, they're going to be uh, boosted by the by their uh, Rockets fan base, especially in this game. Um, they know the the importance of this hockey game as well, and uh, the Laval Rocket have been playing some good hockey too of late, and um, they're on a, a little streak here, two wins and uh, the, and a point against Rockford in a shootout loss. So they're staying staying in in pace too, and they don't want to let that that last playoff spot slip away. And if there's uh, one thing that the Rocket and their fans know very well, it's that. Uh, getting in gets you a shot because Laval got in, again, near the bottom of the North Division standings last season, ended up going all the way uh, to the Eastern Conference Final, losing to the Springfield Thunderbirds. So they know that uh, uh, if you give yourself a shot, you give yourself a shot. And and uh, they've seen uh, you know how that can pay off for them. Yeah, and I think with them too, once they get in, they get Raphael Harvey-Pinard back, they get Alex Belzeal back, they get Jesse Ullinen back because... Let's be frank, the Montreal Canadiens aren't making the NHL playoffs. No, no. So um, you get three of your best forwards back. You, you ride Caden Primo like you were able to last year, and, and this team's looking up at an advantageous position once again. Anthony Richard's been outstanding. Uh, Peter Abandonado, too, has really come on strong. So they've, they've got they've got a good squad, um, and, and Belleville's had to had to play hard against them and like you mentioned the eight and three record but they've been all tight games they've been uh physical games they've been low scoring some of them have been high scoring it's kind of been a mixed bag of everything so um one thing we know is it's going to be a, a tightly 
uh, contested hockey game, and it's going to have a, a playoff type feel to it, much like we saw on Saturday night with the Rochester Americans. So that's uh, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, we'll be on the air at about 6:45 on the Belleville Sands Entertainment Network and AHL TV from beautiful Place Bell in. Laval for the 12th and final meeting of the season between the Sens and uh, the Laval Rocket. Um, after that, the the team will they get a little bit of a, a break in the travel schedule. Instead of hopping on the bus right after the game in Laval and uh, shooting down to Utica, they'll stay in Laval. They'll use Thursday as a travel day and uh, head down to Utica to take on a Comets team that has been really difficult to play against this season. The Sens have not beaten Utica in uh, any of their four matchups so far. Uh, this will be the second last meeting between the uh, two teams as the, they'll play six times this year. But 0-3-1-0 are the Sens against the Comets. And um, much like the positive record against Laval, uh, you can't lean on that. Sens also can't lean on this negative record and go in without any confidence because I think they have to look at the way they've played overall in the last two weeks and uh, and stick to that game plan and a a better effort, a little more energy than they had against Utica here last Wednesday is going to go a long way. Yeah, I think with, with the Utica comments, you know what you're going to get with them. It's uh, it's a hard four-checking game. It's similar to, to the way the Belleville Senators play. They're really well coached with uh, Kevin Deneen behind behind the bench there, a veteran coach. Um, so I think with the Utica comments, it's it's a lot of getting to Nico Dawes and... <clears throat> Um, not letting him get get comfortable in net. Uh, we we've seen what he's been able to do. He's played in four games against Belleville this year. He's got a 930 save percentage, um, and they they've been able to ride him to to a a nice streak here, uh, five game point streak, and they've really climbed up the standings as well of late. And uh, Graham Clark's back from New Jersey. He's got 20 goals this season. So uh, outside of that, though, they've struggled to score. Uh, if you look at at their their stats, so. Uh, it's going to be another tight, tight defensive hockey game. You, you know the Utica Comets want to play that hard defensive style, get in on the four check. Uh, we saw that last Wednesday. Uh, and when they get going and when they can start to create havoc, uh, the goals come for them. They're very opportunistic that way. So um, the Belleville Senators are going to have to really bear down on this one. Utica, another tough building, much like Laval. Um so when we start to to look at these games, a lot goes back to, to the effort. I think when, when we the last time they saw them, Belleville for the first five, six minutes was all over Utica, and then it kind of slipped away. So they certainly know how to, to get to them. They certainly know how to play play against them. And uh, if they're able to, to kind of keep up that high energy and have a better effort, I think they could be in that game as well. Yeah, they're going to have to sustain it uh, and yeah, be consistent at that high energy level. Uh, one of the other you know, challenges for the Sens in all three games this week, much like the last road trip uh, that had stops in Wilkesbury and Hershey, is the buildings they're going to play in. We talked about Laval. We know there's going to be eight to 10,000 fans in the building there. They're going to go to Utica, which is the only building in, in the league that is smaller than the CAA arena, but it's always full. And again, that crowd and those fans are hungry for a deep playoff run. They know what the, the difference between second and third seed means. So it's going to be an important, uh, important game for them. And then you're going to go into Lehigh Valley in the uh, PPL center on, on Saturday where they've got a pretty rabid fan base full of Flyers fans who can be uh, brash at, at times and can, uh, you know, they're going to let the visiting team have it. And the, the Sens are going to have to be ready for all three games, uh, to hear it from the crowd and uh, to maybe not have uh, the calls going their way because of uh, the pressure that the crowd can put on officials, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to be a difficult week. Yeah, and I think you mentioned the crowd that they have. I think they're sitting around six, seven, six or 7,000 average attendance. So they're going to be out there on, on a Saturday night and they're going to uh, try to spur their team on. They they're coming off two big wins. They beat the the Toronto Marlies, who have 37 wins on the air, and then they go and they beat the Providence Bruins, who uh, sit at the top uh, near the top of the Atlantic Division with 32 wins. So they're feeling confident. They're feeling like they can make a run and, and really sustain uh, their spot in, in the Atlantic Division playoff race. So um, they're playing good hockey. Um, they're they're feeling good, and and that's what you want to. 
you want to kind of lay your not rest on your laurels as well. So uh, the Bell Suns they're seven and three in their last ten too. So uh, if you have a good start in Laval, you have a good game in Utica, can really stretch on to to Saturday night in Lehigh Valley as well. It it will be a Saturday night game after overnight travel following the matchup in Utica on Friday. But uh, I mean we're deep in the season uh, by this point. The players are used to that travel schedule, and and you know they'll be ready to go. Um, we don't know as much about the Lehigh Valley Phantoms as we do about Utica and Laval because we only see them twice uh, in a year. The last meeting between the Sens and uh, Phantoms, Belleville picking up a 3-2 win here at home all the way back on November 4th. Uh, it's got to be one of the more spread out uh, matchups uh, with the home and, and away games. But um, what do we know about the Lehigh Valley Phantoms and who are some of the guys that uh, our fans will need to keep an eye on on Saturday night? Yeah, I think it starts in net with Samuel Ursan, and um, I think when he was here, like you mentioned earlier in the year, he hadn't had an AHL win to to his credit over his two seasons, and now he's up to 17 wins. Um, he's also played in 10 NHL contests. He's six and one in the National Hockey League. So uh, it all starts in net, like we know uh, with Belleville's recent stretch of success. It's it's come on the heels of Dylan Ferguson and Kevin Mandelaze really carrying the load. So. And then up front, they have a couple of 20-year-old uh, forwards and Elliot Desnoyers, who's got 20 goals, 38 points. Tyson Forster, you saw him at the uh, American Hockey League All-Star Classic. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of your your old-school uh, right winger, likes to shoot the puck. He's got 38 points in 56 games as well. And then they got veterans. They got our team in Nisimov, Garrett Wilson, uh, Cooper Marodi. And an old friend in Adam Brooks as well, who we saw quite a bit with the the Toronto Marlies. And on the back end, it, it's kind of a same same mismatch of they got some good veterans with Kevin Connaughton. He's been around forever. Uh, and then they got the, the the kids. Adam Jennings, a plus 20 on the year in his Jeez. first year <laughs> oh. coming over from Sweden. So uh, it's going to be a tough match, especially in that building where you mentioned they're, they're pretty rabid. They're... They're getting behind their team now, and uh, they're hoping they can make a run, especially with uh, their parent club really struggling this season. Uh, again, it's Wednesday night in Laval, Friday night in Utica, and Saturday night at Lehigh Valley. If you could boil it down, obviously these are three different teams. Um, you're going to have to have slightly different strategies in how to counter each different opponent, but uh, where do the Belleville Sens need to, I guess, find that consistency across all three opponents? Because I know when we talk to David Bell, he's going to say, we have to worry about ourselves and play our game and not be focused on the other team. So where do the Senators uh, need to put that focus in order to find some success this week? I think it's going to be a lot of, of the same stuff playing to their identity, like you mentioned, but the power play's got to start going here, especially on the road, because you're going to face... Caden Primo most likely on Wednesday night. Then you're going to get Nico Dawes, and then you're going to get Sam Ersan. So uh, those guys don't like to, to give up much, and, and the easiest way to, to kind of uh, get your offense going is start to connect on the power play and start to get some, some free flow t to your hockey game. And um, once those guys start to feel good about themselves, we've seen Angus Crookshank. Once they start going in and they start falling, they tend to come in bunches, Roby Irvente as well. So... Um, I think David Bell, uh, like you mentioned, after uh, Saturday night's win, uh, the power play was going to be kind of the focus Monday, Tuesday here. and Because um, their defensive prowess and their penalty kill has been uh, unreal, to, to be quite frank, over uh, this last stretch since he's taken over. Uh, the goaltending has been a big piece of things as well. We mentioned earlier Kevin Mandelaze recalled to the National Hockey League with Ottawa, which means um, with Antoine Bebo, as as of the recording of this program, still out injured, um, it's going to be a busy week for Dylan Ferguson. Any concerns about the workload for him? I think he's he's such a laid-back personality, and, and you always worry about it, especially uh, with the back-to-backs, but... He's been waiting for this opportunity. He wants to play games. I think he mentioned to you when he went on his Kelly Cup run, he had played, what was it, 15 games in 18 days yeah, or something, something crazy like, like that. So uh, I think he's uh, he's pretty excited for an opportunity to, to make that his net for, for a week here. Yeah, he's got his new mask as well. It's looking pretty sharp. And, yeah, let's not forget that uh, 
regardless of the league, a championship's a championship, and Dylan Ferguson has that championship pedigree from winning an ECHL Kelly Cup to hopefully lead the Senators through this weekend successfully. Uh, once again, Wednesday night in Laval, Friday night in Utica, Saturday night in Lehigh Valley. We're on the air at 645 all three nights on the Belleville Sands Entertainment Network, either via the Senators app or website or our Mixler page or AHL TV, a pile of ways you can follow the action this week. Joel will have all the uh, post-game recaps as always, and Alex Smith, as he always does, will be uh, hammering uh, out the tweets on the social media if you want to follow along. Uh, With that, we'll say goodbye on Episode 8 for uh, Alex Pickford and Joel Vanderland. David Foote thanking you as always for listening, and we'll talk to you next week on the Belleville Sins podcast, the Belleville Sins Entertainment Network.